very pleased to call on the General Secretary designate to address Congress. Paul was nominated by 33 unions and elected up unopposed, and he will take up office on the 1st of January. Paul, we're looking forward to hearing from you. President, Congress, 33 years ago, I started working part-time for ASDA. I joined the GMB, the same union my dad was proud to be a member of for most of his working life. And when I started working at ASDA, I never thought for one single minute that I would ever have the honor and the privilege to be elected the General Secretary of the TUC. So I wanna thank Congress for your support and because trade unionism is a collective endeavor, is always a collective endeavor, I want to thank every member, every rep, every full-time officer, every TUC staff member, every TUC tutor who supported and helped me over the last three decades. Thank you very much, Congress. I don't know what the next few years will bring, but I promise to do what I can to justify the support that you've given me and to extend that support to the next generation of reps and activists coming through, the people who are the lifeblood of our movement. Now I'm aware we're halfway through Wednesday afternoon. This isn't the time for long speeches. I suspect, I suspect you're gonna hear a few of those from me over the coming months and years, but I just wanna say three things in accepting the nomination. The first one is to sincerely thank Frances for the work that she has done on behalf of the TUC. Now, Francis has been my good friend and colleague now for over 20 years, so I am not an impartial observer, but I think it's absolutely right to acknowledge that she has been an outstanding leader of our movement. The first woman to ever lead our movement, and let's be clear, she won't be the last woman to lead our movement. She's seen us through She's seen us through some incredibly difficult times. 10 years of hostile government and austerity, a vicious, vindictive trade union act with more to come, Brexit, and of course the pandemic and the cost of living crisis. And I could list out all of their achievements. I said it'd be a short contribution, but let me just pick out one thing that I think she'll be remembered for, because I have no doubt in my mind that if it wasn't for Francis O'Grady, there would have been no furlough scheme during the pandemic. It's thanks to her that 12 million people saw their jobs and their incomes protected. 12 million people kept their livelihoods. 12 million people and their families were able to pay their bills. So Francis, thank you for that. Thank you for everything you've done over the last decade uh, and more. The second thing that I wanna say is this. I wanna spend my time leading the TUC focused on one thing above anything else. That is growing, diversifying, strengthening our movement. More union members, more union reps, an active, inclusive, confident, vibrant, diverse movement, one that is as relevant to a young black woman working in digital or in a care home as it is this middle-aged white bloke from Merseyside. A trade union movement for every worker in this country. <laughs> think, of, think of everything that we have debated this week. A 15 pound an hour minimum wage, rebuilding our public services, a proper industrial strategy, a new deal for working people, decent employment rights, and an end to fire and rehire, genuine equality, tackling racism and sexual harassment in our workplaces. Congress, our ability to deliver on all of those things and so much more depends on our ability to grow as a movement. Only a stronger trade union movement can win disputes right across the public and the private se sector. Only a stronger trade union movement can influence government and beat back hostile legislation. And only a stronger trade union movement, and indeed a stronger labor and trade union movement, can bring about the political change our members desperately need. Now we've grown four years out of the last five, and that's a really good start and testament to the work that people have done in this room and across our unions. But let's pledge here today, Congress, that we're gonna make sure that each and every year from now, we grow our membership. We get more people to join 
our rep space, that we extend collective bargaining. Not waiting for political change, making that change happen here and now, workplace by workplace, campaign by campaign, dispute by dispute, winning for working people. <laughs> and my last point is simply this, because if we're serious about growing our movement, it has to be a collective effort. The TUC has always been, will always be more than just the General Secretary and the staff at the TUC in Congress House, the regions and the nations. The TUC is its unions, it's you. Every single delegate in this room, every rep back in those thousands of workplaces, 48 unions, five and a half million members. And if we're serious about growing our movement, we have to be serious about working together. I mean serious about working together, not just talking about working together, not just passing resolutions about working together, but practically working together in workplaces, supporting each other's organising efforts, joint bargaining agendas that rise up all of our members, sectoral coordination to stop employers playing one union off against the other, a shared political vision that inspires working people up and down the country. And in each and every dispute, standing by workers who take that difficult decision to strike because their fight is our fight and no worker should ever, will ever stand alone. Let's send that message Congress today. That's what's going to allow us to deliver on the things that matter to our members. That's what will enable us to win. Not glorious defeats, not fighting a good fight, but falling short, winning for working people. That's our job, job Congress. So let's work together, let's fight together, let's win together. Thank you very much. Thanks, Congress. So Congress, um, congratulations to Paul. Great to hear those inspiring words. You've heard what we're going to get. It's what we've been talking about all week. So I'm sure you all join with me in wishing Paul every success in the future, but also listening to what he says and working with him to achieve that success. So thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you.